It's UK. We're oh, here yeah. in London with a fabulous group of people, with Petula here as well, and with Carrie Oberunner. And we're introducing you to live, was it one minute coaching? Oh, uh, speed coaching. Speed coaching, that's the phrase, speed coaching that we're going to have together. And yeah, tell us more for Petula as well. We have just had a whole day of downloads <coughs> and it has just been so exciting. And anybody that says that British people are quiet and boring, they haven't been in our room. <laughs> But it's our privilege to be able to introduce our coach, our mentor, our chief igniter, Kerry yeah. Oberbrunner. Over to you, Kerry. Awesome. Awesome. How are you guys doing today? Good. Good. All right, listen, here's what we're going to do. I want people who are watching as well, you guys can type in your questions, but we're going to share this a few places. I'm getting it queued up. And as we get started tonight, we are going to answer questions. We're going to give 60-second answers. So here's the rules. Someone's going to come up. They're going to basically state their question, and they get 60 seconds. Sunil's going to hold it. Yeah, just pop your volume down. It's all good. And then I get 120 seconds to give you an answer. Is that okay? Awesome. Are you guys ready? This is going to be fun. I'm going to share this a few places. I'm going to share it in our groups. So who wants to be first? Anybody want to be first? I'll go first. Stand up. You get uh, 60 seconds. I'm going to share this a few places. And then uh, go ahead. If you're watching, type in where you're from. We have Joan from Tennessee. We have uh, Tove. We have a whole bunch of people. So go ahead and say your name and where you're from. OK, so my name is Jeremy. I'm from Oxford. And my question won't take 60 seconds. But it's, I think it's a critical one for me. What comes first, the platform or the book? Which comes first, the platform or the book? Great question. Do you guys have that question as well? Anybody else? Just, just one? Okay. So listen, we'll answer that question. Thanks so much, Jeremy. By the way, tell us what your topic of your book is, because that might affect my answer. Okay, so the topic of my book is around improving performance and uh, selling effectively. Improving performance and selling effectively. Okay, and he wants to know, should he build a platform first or, sh or should he write the book? Fantastic. By the way, Tony, we can, we can see your head. Sorry, dude. Sorry, man. Um, it's a great head, Tony. But, all right, now I've got it shared everywhere else. We got the Elixir Project group. We got the Six Figure group. We got the Igniting Souls Trot. Go ahead, type in where you guys are from. And uh, you guys ready? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So listen, that is, a, that is a great question. Do you build a platform or do you write the book? Listen, I think it really depends on your brain, okay? So how long are you going to build your platform? What do you guys think? How long? When do you stop building? You, you, you never stop. Never stop. Do you think Oprah Winfrey today is meeting with her team saying, how can we continue to expand our brand. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I believe she is. I believe everyone on planet Earth right now, the biggest people you can think about, are strategizing with their team saying, how can we build our platform bigger? So, A, your platform's never gonna be big enough. Let's just get that out of the, out, out, okay? So now your next question is, when should you launch? And we're getting a little bit of volume. If you guys got volume, just turn it down. That'll help me out. We won't get any reverb then. Okay. So, is that me talking? Okay. Yeah, just turn it down. Thanks. So, the point is this. I think there's certain types of brains that want to slow bake their books. For example, check it out. Have you ever met someone and you're like, oh my gosh, you have a baby? I didn't even know you were pregnant. Is this true? Yeah. Or, oh my gosh, you got married? I didn't even know you were dating anybody. Is this true? Yeah. What does that comment illustrate? Oh yeah, I gotta do it quick. What does that comment illustrate? I forgot I was on time. Give me two more minutes. I'm gonna go quick from now on, okay? What does that comment illustrate? It illustrates the fact they weren't involved in the journey. Yes. They were surprised. They have zero ownership. So what I'm telling you is, if you can bring an audience along with you, and they can share that journey in with you, it's very exciting. They feel like, oh my gosh, he's sharing with us the cover. We get to vote on the cover. He's sharing with us chapter one. 
he's telling us about his marketing plan. And all I'm saying is, you're missing all that if you, if you just say, I'm gonna go in a closed room, no one's gonna talk to me, and I'm gonna write this book, then I'm gonna go out to the world, and then share it with the world. Well, the world doesn't even know you're writing it. Mm. Yeah. So I encourage people to do both and. That's why I encourage a lot of people, if they can, to do Business Academy Elite and Author Academy Elite, because they can kind of test things. They get me as a coach, David as a coach, and they kind of work it out in real time. Does that make sense? Super, yeah. thank you. Okay, I'm gonna go faster from now on, because I forgot I was being time. All right, <laughs> so who's next? Come up, share your book. If you got one, we got Hyacinth, come on up. And Tony, I am sorry I put that camera so close to you. That's all right. So, so you can move. Petula will tell you, or we can shift it. Uh, That's as well. all right. Okay, go ahead, Hyacinth. Okay. What is your book? Okay, I'm Hyacinth, um, author of Journey to Wholeness. Love it. And uh, I'm actually going to be writing my second book, uh, and it's called When Love, when Love Isn't Enough. And actually, when I wrote Journey to Wholeness, I knew that I was going to be writing other books coming mm. from there. And so my second book will be based on that. It's really about our children who we adopted uh, 14 years ago. Wow. And basically, it's their story. So it's really um, sort of homing in on adoption and fostering and some of the huge challenges that we face. So I particularly wanted to find out, A, the structure of, of the book, whether I should actually do it as a fiction, because it's going to be about our children. Yeah. Or, and also whether um, the, the subtitle is what I'd like to know. Okay. What's the best way forward? How to structure it? And as I say, whether we should, I should be the person in the character of my sure. children. So it's just to really give yeah. me some idea okay. about that. Would you like to make big influence, impact, and income Absolutely. from your book. Okay, all right, grab a seat. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Mm -hmm. So, Hyacinth, start mm -hmm. me on the two, two minute clock here. Here's the point. Every nonfiction book solves a problem, okay? So people buy nonfiction books to solve a problem. If she can solve her problem better with nonfiction, mm -hmm. then I think that's the answer. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if she can basically title it and subtitle it, subtitles, Here's, here's the point. Titles hook, subtitles explain the benefit. Right. Okay, so you want, for instance, we have a great lady in the back named Lisa. We're not going to tell you. Wasn't that a good title and subtitle we came up with yeah. earlier today? Yeah. I mean, it's fantastic. But people hear the title, they're like, what's that? That's the point. But then the subtitle, you don't want them to say, what's that? Okay. You want them to say, I want that. Okay? okay? So, what I'm going to say is that every nonfiction book has usually three parts. I'm going to use day job to dream job as an example and show me that clock if you don't mind. So, what you want is you want usually uh, three parts of a book for nonfiction. We call it the beginning, the middle, and the end. The beginning is the problem. Mm -hmm. Don't give the solution. You don't go to a doctor and they say, hey, you need chemotherapy, here you go. Okay? You're like, what? What do you mean? I don't even have cancer. You got to talk about the problem yeah, first. Yeah. Statistics, cost, problem. Mm -hmm. Then this is the main part of your book. We call this a framework. A framework is simple steps, a solution broken down into simple steps. A framework is a solution broken down into simple steps. In this book, I have steps one through nine. And then your third part is the life after. The life after you get foster kids, the life after the adoption, this beautiful picture. Prison plan payoff, Shawshank Redemption, day job to dream job. I would go nonfiction if I were you because you can make an easier jump into your courses. Cool? You can turn that ringer real loud. I like to get buzzed real loud. Not in my flow. So who's next? Come on up. Come on up, Tobey. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Up here quickly. No, you're fine. <laughs> tell us uh, about you. Tell um, us what. Sorry, yeah. I don't have an S in the way. <laughs> 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 tell, tell, tell us about you. <laughs> so, um, my book is called Mind Over Natter because we have those voices in the head, we have the conditioning of society out there. But I, I like to bring it from the calamity of the world that's a mayhem and full of mindlessness into the quiet of mindfulness. The issue that I have, Carrie, is that it is an 
experiential thing of yeah. mindfulness. How will I be able to translate that? And can I do the three parts yeah. in the book? Sure. I, I'm also, what I learned from uh, Author Academy Elite is that the transfer of concept into workshops and yeah. uh, spin offs. Yes. So I really see it as being a place where you can take this to a stage, yep. you know, where you can uh, show different mindlessness for thin ways, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, different ways to experience life. So I'm looking at maybe that's the first book, and then there's yeah. a, there's a By the way, she has a radio voice, true? <laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 She has a good voice? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right, Very, excellent. So here's the thing. Yeah, you start that clock. What I heard your question was, correct me if I'm wrong, how do you turn an experiential topic like mindfulness into other products and services? <laughs> correct? I have a friend, his name is Jeff. And Jeff does virtual coaching for health. So John Lee Dumas, Pat Flynn, all these people, Jeff is their virtual physical trainer. You might say, how in the world can you do it? You can still yell at somebody. You can still tell them their form's bad. You, you see what I'm saying? You can still tell them, hey, what's got, we got to meet. People want today, uh, they want personal touch and personal service. I would have a high-end product that's one-on-one. -on -one. Certain people don't want to be in a group. Certain people want to pay for premier access to you. Okay? Show me that clap. All right. So then what I would do is I would, we call this spark flame blaze. Spark flame blaze. Spark is the early entry level program. It might even be free, a free thing. And then you have this membership site. This is what you're going to find success in, a membership site. People pay $30. Someone get out a calculator for me. $30 a month. Pounds. Who's got it? 25 pounds. Can somebody give me a calculator on your 25 phone. 25 pounds. Okay. 25 pounds. 25 pounds times 100 members. 2,500. Times 12 months. Uh, Go ahead and figure that out. What? 30,000 pounds. And you have a, see how quickly we went up? For a membership course. In your membership course, they have weekly live trainings with you. People come for content, they stay for community. Have a membership site that's tied to your Facebook group and it's $30 a month, they get content from you and they experience it and that'll be a great seed for your book. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. It's gotta be louder, it's gotta scare me. Who's next? Come on up. Gordon, correct? Correct. Awesome. What about online? Do we have people jumping on? Any questions that they have? No you questions. can read them to me. Where are they from tonight or this afternoon? Petula. Anybody? Jeannie Smith is on. Jeannie Smith. Okay, fantastic. Joan, Joan Turley is on. Joan, fantastic. All right. Great. Um, I'm Gordon. Uh, I'm quite good a book to show you yet. Uh, it's about to be printed. Uh, my book's called Growing Younger. Uh, mm -hmm. Subtitle is What Children Know and Adults Need to Relearn. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's all about uh, becoming childlike. It's about how you know we have dreams and passions as a child and then we somehow lose them on the journey to adulthood mm -hmm. and how we can recapture some of those. And also how you heal from tra tra childhood trauma or where you, your dreams got blocked somewhere okay. on, the, on the line. So, um, I, my questions, uh, I know I've got a, a website, Life Consulting, because I'm a life consultant, lifeconsulting.co.uk. Now, um, my question is all about launch. Let's talk about launch. And yeah. about how, how are we going to get my book onto the, uh, I'd love it to be a big hit, yeah. uh, like everybody, uh, and uh, hit yeah. the stores, that would yeah. be amazing, wouldn't it? So, any tips? Sure. On, on creative ways to launch, because it's all about children, yeah. and I work with kids all my life, so yeah. um, cool. I did a lot of work in schools. And 60 stuff seconds, like. you're so, up. And remind <laughs> me, are you an author Academy Elite? Yeah, I am. Okay, so he's an author Academy Elite. Yeah. So what he can do is he can log into Author Academy Elite. The top right says Author Academy. Yeah. I give you guys crazy good content. It's pre-launch, launch, and post-launch. So there's modules for each phase. Here's the three things that you need if you're not part of Author Academy Elite. You need a launch team, you need a launch party, you need a digital press kit. Your digital press kit is where media can find you online. I give you guys mine in Author Academy Elite. This makes you media interviewable. It says basically what to, 
what to know to sound like you've read Carrie's book even though you haven't. Okay? And it literally prepares people on how to sound like an expert. I would encourage you, there's an uh, old song called Return to Innocence. It's back in the day. Remind, remember that one? Yes. Yeah. Who sang it? I can't remember right now. Return to Innocence. But there's this, there's this feeling that adults need to go back. They need to go back to that. And you talked about this childhood trauma and this type of thing. Inner child, return to innocence. But your book can be a lot less heavy. And your book sounds really fantastic. It sounds upbeat. It sounds exciting. But people join your launch party not so they can buy your book. They join your launch party because they believe in the message. Your job is chief visionary. Okay? If you just say, hey guys, I'm glad you're part of this launch team. I'm glad you're going to buy my book. No one's going to be happy. But if you say, look, we all remember what it was like when we had this age of wonder, when we had no judgment, when we were living large and being explorative. Return to innocence. Mm. This book uh, is going to be fantastic, and we need to launch this to the world and help people heal from all the pain. Now people are like, oh my gosh, yes, my sister's like that. I need help. Okay? Awesome. Next question. Go ahead, pop yeah. up. Everybody can get on here. You guys have been a great audience all day. Wasn't that food amazing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've never had potatoes with olives, crushed olives. <laughs> I'm going to start. Or carrot soup. <laughs> that was awesome. Healthy food. Yes. Hi, I'm Jill. I'm Jill from um, Doncaster, UK. Jill Bentham. And my question is, having written one book as Jill Scott, Disentangling Genius, um, what do you think, Kerry, are the indications that somebody might need to rebrand, relaunch, or take a different tack? Mm -hmm. I started out um, with, with one particular message. I now think it's only a section of what I've got to say, and I want to find the umbrella over all of that. Yeah. Awesome. So, so what are the signs that you need to rebrand? Re okay, cool. So we call this in, in our world a pivot. It doesn't mean you're going backwards. See? Don't call it, I'm moving backwards. Call it a pivot. What are some celebrities that have done pivots? Anybody? The Rock. The Rock. Mm -hmm. Taylor Swift. We mentioned her a few. This, listen, all kinds of people, right? Mm -hmm. All kinds of people have made pivots, even authors. Mm -hmm. So I think the signs are, if you think there's more influence, impact, than income out there that you are not tapping into, mm -hmm. you need to make a pivot. Let me be transparent. I was a pastor who wrote from 2004 to 2012, probably six books. Now I've written four in, since I've been an entrepreneur. I knew I could only reach certain people. I mean, look at this. Young adult fiction where I'm a 17-year-old girl in the book. Is that a pivot? I would say so. But here's the point. I knew I needed to prove that I could do young adult fiction I knew I needed to prove it for my business, my audience. Plus, I thought, you know what? I like challenges, and my writing was getting kind of stale and boring. So I, it made me, as a writer, really push and have to learn new skills. I think it's exciting. I think it's growth. Now, if you change every day, you will repel people, unless that is your brand. There are certain people whose that is their brand, where they purposely try to reinvent themselves all the time. But I would say most people, it's going to give them a wild roller coaster ride. So I would really think through your pivot before. Haven't we seen brands like Radio Shack before they folded? They didn't know who they were. You know what their tagline was? Meet your friends at the shack. What does that even mean? Radio Shack. You know, that's, that's right before they folded. I think it's indicative of the fact why they folded. They didn't know who they were. Okay? Awesome. Cool. Next person. Yes, come on up. And and it's Bammy, <laughs> not Bami, because I was calling you crazy in the Latin or the, the London word, right? See? I've been okay. making cross cultural mistakes all day. Hi. My name is Bami and I'm the author of Navigating Your New Normal, your roadmap nice. to life fulfillment after trauma. So my question is, we've been talking about groups and all I have are pages. How do I make that transition from 
the page to the group to, to the a group. successful one. Yeah. Here's the big no-no. Never add people to a group without their permission. Yeah. Yeah. You will create anger with people. Yeah. So what I would do, this is, the, thank you. This is what you should do. This is what I do before I start any group. I do a one sheet. A one sheet is who, what, when, where, why, and how. I did it for this event. Mm -hmm. In fact, go to carryoverbrunner.com slash UK and you will literally see the one sheet I did on this event. <coughs> Guess what? This event is sold out. I don't think it's by accident. I don't think you came to see a bald guy with the girl's name, right? I think that I was clear. <coughs> don't, don't you think? Yeah. I said, who's it for? Here's what we're going to learn. So, bomb, bomby, what did I say it wrong? Mary? I want to call her last syllable. Uh, so, Deli. I'm going to call you Deli. It's my new nickname for you. So, I don't sound dumb. Uh, but what I would do is I would actually write out a one sheet Who is your group for? What will they experience? Why are you creating it? When does it start? Where is it going to be? And how can people join? I would give them a sample chapter of your book for joining. I would really stack up the reasons why. If, the big, if you start with a big why, it suddenly becomes compelling. Okay? And then basically shoot it out. You are great. I've seen your videos. Create a great title. So basically, make it very intriguing. Make your title. What's something you could do that's intriguing? Why I'm starting over. Yeah. Yes. Oh, cool. Yeah. People are gonna be like, yeah. "What? What is she talking about?" Start. I know her. I just. I'm like, Should I be nervous? Why I'm starting <laughs> over. Yeah. And then you basically list the whys. You invite them into the group. Yeah. And then, I'm gonna ask for a bonus ten seconds. Ready? Sure, sure. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Ready? Mission Monday. Tool Tuesday. Oh. Sorry, mission. Mission Monday. <laughs> mission Monday. Watch it on replay, Barry. Tool Tuesday. <laughs> Word Wednesday. You are fine. Thankful Thursday. Mm -hmm. Facebook Friday. Don't worry, I'll tell you after. Strategic Saturday and Sneak Peek Sunday. Wow. That gives her a framework for every single day to do a simple, easy post. And I'll weave it into another person's answer mm -hmm. so I can tell you exactly what those are, okay? <laughs> All right, who's next? Sneak peek sometimes. Who's next? Okay, we got Michael. Come on up here. Don't, don't worry about that. Okay. Awesome. All right. My name is Mike Robinson, and I'm still in early days. I've been with Author Academy Elite for a month. Awesome. So I'm just in the process of actually releasing the book proposal. And the title is, Can You Hear Destiny Calling? Ten life-changing choices that will bring freedom from the past, focus on the present, and faith for the future. And the idea behind that is many people start off with a vision, clear ideas of some things they can do with their life, but so many people get sidetracked by bad experiences or good experiences. And the whole premise of the book is to say, no matter what you've gone through, wrong thinking from the past is possible mm -hmm. to change that with making the right choices that start building the foundation yeah. to then start having the right attitude which then can start release you to actually go back and fulfill the dreams, the destiny that you had when you started off. Mm -hmm. Just behind it. Love it. My question, question. is, yeah. um, obviously it's early days. When I look at this, from my perspective, I think, well, that could apply to a, a lot of different people, but I'm told you need to have a target audience. So who would be, or who would you suggest my target audience would be with something like this? Sure, can I hold that? Yeah. So here's his statements. Do you guys think this is for corporate? 10 life-changing choices that will bring freedom from the past, focus on the present, and faith for your future. No, no. no I agree. So here's what I think it's, it's for people who want life change, people who love personal growth, people who love self-improvement. To me, that's your target audience. And as a result, um, here's what you should do. Check this out. Success Magazine, right? All these magazines, this is gold, you ready? This is gold. This is millions of dollars worth of research, right? Right at your fingertips. Every magazine has an advertising guide. Success Magazine, Women's Day, every single one. You, you Google advertising on Success Magazine. What you'll do, you'll find a very detailed, solid proposal 
of what the median income is, what the education level is, what the age is, what the race is perhaps, and you will find all the demographics. So you go after the magazines of the people that you think might be reading this, and then you Google it for the advertising guide, and you will have mountains of research that's spelled out with color-coded charts, because why? They want people to pay them money to advertise. And as a result, then you can look and bundle that with Facebook, and if you're with Business Academy Elite, you can say, hey David, what little budget I have, should I invest? And they can actually target people who like Success Magazine, or Women's Day, or this type of thing. And you can, you can just cherry pick, okay? Make sense? Thank you. Awesome, all right. Next person, come on up, anybody. Yes, we have Rosemary. That was a good dinner, it was a good chat with you. Yeah. It's a maze, that's part of the goal, right? Yeah, my name's Rosemary and I'm writing a how-to book, how to make um, presentations. Uh, it's going to be quite detailed and the course is going to be relatively easy to create mm -hmm. from it. My problem is thinking about the title, the subtitle, and the brand. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I like to do is I like to grab popular phrases that we have. Let's shout them out. Let's, th let's do a group thing together. What are phrases about speaking? Common phrases that you hear. Fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. All right. Stage fright. Stage fright. Okay. Let's take that one. Yeah. Stage fright. So you call it stage fight. Mm -hmm. yeah. See the difference? Yeah. And now she has a term called stage fighter. Mm -hmm. And this is if she wants. This yeah. is only five seconds of thinking about it. But she actually can now, with the overview of her book, create a framework. So what do you know about fighters? The ring, mm -hmm. right? The ring. The, and what Pre do we know? Preparation. There's preparation. Training. Mindset. And if we use the word preparation, I always try to have them end with shun. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they're parallel. Part one, mm -hmm. preparation. Part two, motivation. Part three, implementation. Something mm -hmm. like that. And she's got one, two, and three. Stage, fight. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then what would be the subtitle? They're called listicle. Listicle is numbers. People love numbers. If you just say practical steps, people are thinking, 397 you know but if you say 12 steps or 12 keys or use the metaphor don't use keys and fighter rounds. what's a metaphor that we could keep Round. 12 Round. rounds mm -hmm. 12 rounds to become a champion knockout <laughs> But you see how this goes? Yeah. You want to keep the common metaphor. Listicle is good. And here's what you do with your subtitle. Ten seconds. Enter the conversation that's already going on in their head. They have fear. They have anxiety. So you want to deliver peace and confidence. Make sense? Stage, fight, go by the domain. I love it. I love it. That was good. Yes. Anybody else? Next person. I'll take it. Yeah, and listen, we'll do one live. If somebody wants to, uh, if somebody wants to on Facebook ask their question, we'll do that as well. So, um, you talked about it this morning, but I think it'd be great to do a recap in terms of self-limiting beliefs, particularly around self-doubt, yeah. uh, fear, and I think, I mean, I've had the book in me for a long time, yeah. and I've given myself all sorts of excuses and things like yeah. that, but at the back of my mind, there is this fear and self-doubt there as well. Yeah. Give us some tips about how to deal with that. Yeah. So, you guys ever see the movie Inception yes. with Leonardo DiCaprio? Mm -hmm. If you don't know the plot, he basically hacks into people's dreams. And everything's fine until he starts realizing he's in a dream. Mm -hmm. Then everything starts to become unstable and the people in the dream start attacking him and try to kill him. It's the same thing with you. Mm -hmm. Let me explain what I'm talking about. If I'm coaching Lisa, and I'm like, oh my gosh, how am I coming home right now? Yeah. Oh my gosh, what if she asks me a question I don't know? Oh my gosh, you see what I'm saying? What am I doing right now? Mm -hmm. You're sabotaging myself. I'm sabotaging yeah. myself. Who am I thinking about? Yourself. 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 Myself. I've never sold anyone when I'm thinking about myself. Mm -hmm. When you see yourself lacking confidence, when you feel fear and doubt coming up, 
Don't judge yourself. Don't say, there, you're doing it again, Sunil. Say, you know what? Say, isn't that interesting? <laughs> isn't that interesting that right when I'm about to write an amazing paragraph, yeah. I feel fear and self-doubt? And then say, you know what? That's a good sign. Mm. And what I say in my faith background is I say, the enemy only attacks people he's threatened by. Mm -hmm. This book's going to be good. Mm -hmm. yes. See what I'm saying? Yes. So you acknowledge the fact that you feel that way, but then you say, isn't that interesting? No judgment. And then you go back to the reader because that's who you're serving. You're not serving yourself and saying, how am I coming across? You're actually serving the reader on the other end. Cool? Mm -hmm. All right, next person. I see, I see Muriel getting prepped. Oh. She's ready. She's ready to launch. She's ready to launch. Here she comes. Awesome. Hey. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Muriel, and uh, I'm the author of Daily Whispers from His Heart, which is a 90 days devotional. Uh, and my question is I released this book just about five weeks ago, and um, it just sat on Amazon. Yeah. So what can I do in terms of marketing to boost the sales? Yeah. And uh, also, what other um, source of income I can create from, from the devotional? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So here's what I would do. In my book, you can stay up here. She's, she's never launched it. <clears throat> so in other words, when you say to the world that you are going to have your global launch coming up, let me guess, you probably didn't have a party for it. No. You probably didn't have a launch team for it. No. You probably didn't have a press kit for it. No, you probably didn't borrow <laughs> other people's platforms by doing a podcast, blog tour, or anything else. No. That's okay. So in my opinion, she already did a soft launch. Yeah. Yeah. And if people say, well, you launched that thing five weeks ago. Why are you having a global launch? You say, it's good enough for Hollywood, it's good enough for me. <laughs> yeah. okay? right. Hollywood launches on you know California yeah. and New York yeah. a few weeks before, and then they have the real launch. So your global launch is any day that you want it to be. Mm -hmm. With November and December, I might even pick January. Mm -hmm. And what I would do is, we talked about this, no one's going to join a 90-day course. Mm -hmm. So what she does is she takes five days, and she has a five-day challenge. Mm -hmm. And she gives away the first five days for free. And she makes video content around it. So she makes five little iPhone videos. Mm -hmm. She has a Facebook group. She calls the Facebook group. <coughs> she calls it Hearing from God's Heart Five-Day Challenge. Something like that. I made that up. Whatever you want. Daily Whispers Five-Day Challenge. You just, you know, Daily Whispers, people might be like, oh, that's a sex group. So you got to name it something <laughs> that, you know, if it's... It, you see what I'm saying? You gotta name it clear because you don't want the wrong group in there. Right? So, hearing from God's heart, five day challenge. And then you tell people at the end of day five, you're gonna hear from God in a way you've never heard before. We mentioned this at dinner. On day six, you do a master class. The master class is you live in your Facebook group and anyone else you wanna invite. You show up and you basically share your passion and invite them into. The course which is 25 days yeah. people will then buy the 25 days now they're at day 30 mm. so then what do you do on day mm. 30 you sell them in the next 30 then you sell them in the final 30 and then you have a certification when they complete all 90 days okay Thank you. awesome she yeah. has a course around it she can coach around it she can speak around it it can be a retreat a seminar a workshop a movement oh. all right but do that global launch Digital press kit, launch team, launch party, and a tour where you borrow other people's platforms. Okay. All right? Mm -hmm. And if you're not an author at Academy Elite, consider it because we give you templates mm -hmm. for all of this stuff plus illustrations. Next person. Anybody, come on up. Promote your, yourself, your future book. Well, we have chauffeur husbands in the room. You can come up too. Whatever. Afterwards, you get your, you get your slot. Awesome. Hi. Hey, Abby. Hi. Good to Hi. see you. Um, so, yeah, I think what I really want to ask is um, how can I work with what I've got right now? I haven't got a book. Um, and I suppose I need to understand what my offering is right yeah. here and now. Um, without a book, um, my time, like everybody, is very precious. But right. I have to pay an awful lot for childcare. 
in order to do anything other than mm. be a mum. Yeah. So I can't afford to do anything yeah. for free because yeah. it costs me money to right. do, you know, to, yeah. to have my kids looked after. So I suppose my question is, how can I be working on the book um, and working with what I've got? Yeah. Which is me. Um, yeah. in, in the here and now, and um, I suppose working out what that offering is to the world. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. <laughs> So what I do for some people is I tell them to have a high ticket offer. Because listen, you're going to do the same amount of work. Mm -hmm. So why not make more money? Mm -hmm. Right? Sometimes there's an approach to reach a lot of people with a small offer and build up this big swell. But she's busy. Yeah. So she wants her time to count. Mm -hmm. You think if people invest a higher dollar, they're more committed? Mm -hmm. So what I would do is I would basically say, you know what? I have I have a uh, five slots available for to coach in 2019. Mm -hmm. She needs an application. At the bottom of the application, it says have resources, have access to resources, don't have any resources. The don't have any resources, you treat them with respect. You basically say, you know what, it's probably not for us at this time. You record a nice video, include a chapter of your book or a PDF or something where you just bless them. The other people, you set up a 20-minute interview. We talked about doing this on a scheduler so that you don't have to sit there and go back and forth. You say, here's access to my calendar. Schedule a 20-minute slot. You look at their application. You see what their goals are. You see if you want to work with them. And you're interviewing them just like they're interviewing you. And then at the end, you say, fantastic. I would love to extend one of these slots to you. You have 48 hours to decide. Feel free to ask me any questions. Here's how many weeks it's going to be. Here's the cost. And here's what we're going to achieve. Cool? Yeah. yeah. And then she can fund it and hire the outside help she needs to finish her book. Cool? Yeah. Awesome. All right. Take care. No problem. Anybody else? Come on up. Don't be bashful. I want everyone to go. Even husbands or wives. No, you don't have to go. I'm not going to force you. Danella. Thank you. So my name is Danella Hoyle, and my book is called Born to Learn, and there's practical steps for improving self-love and self-work. In my book, I have many meditations, and I want to record some in my own voice as a product. What suggestions and advice would you give me? Fantastic. You guys ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazon owns Audible. Audible owns ACX. Mm -hmm. ACX is where she should do her audiobook. I say that because of several reasons. One is distribution. She's now in the largest store in the world. Google and YouTube are the highest search engines, but Amazon is about third, and Amazon's tied to products and sales. So if she could record her book or part of her book on audio, then it's able to be distributed on Amazon and around the world. The other thing is that she gets a bounty so here's what Audible does. They say to her, listen, we're gonna give you a link for your book for free if you share it, your audiobook, and people buy it, sorry, if people click on your link and sign up for an Audible subscription using your book as the first book, we'll give you an extra $70 bounty. Does this make sense? Yeah. If her book is the, is the hook that gets people to sign up for an Audible subscription, as long as they remain in two months, she now gets a $70 bounty. Do the math. 10 people do her audiobook. She now has $700 plus other royalties. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. So you definitely want to do that. And then you share that link with the world. You basically say, hey, I just recorded my first audiobook. Here's a link, and you can get it for free when you sign up for a subscription. She should seed the sale by talking about the value of audiobooks. This is a true fact. People commute enough that after three years, they could earn a PhD in any subject matter. Mm -hmm. So she seeds the audience first by talking about how she loves audiobooks and how audiobooks you can earn a PhD rather than listening to sports and music, you could actually earn a PhD in your content. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Then they're like, audiobooks, I love them. And then she says, guess what, mine, mine just came out, okay? Great, thank awesome. You. All right, thank you. Next person. Come on up. Questions? Can I just go ahead? You, can, you want part two? You can do part two? Part two. The other question, because you, you're a high energy guy. 
you have energy. You just arrived in the US yesterday, and yeah. you, yeah. you, 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 you had a half an hour run this morning. You're rough. You're, yeah. we're like, tell us, and obviously we're writing books, but many of us are very busy. We've got 101 other things yeah. to do. What are some tips and secrets for mm. maintaining sure. high energy? Sure. Everybody falsely talks about work-life balance. True? Mm. There is no balance in life. I'll tell you why, okay? Right now, I'm balanced. So someone hand me something. Right now, I'm balanced. Okay? Hand me something else. Okay? Now I gotta pick up my kids from school. Okay, so hand me something else. Now I gotta make dinner. Okay. Now I gotta work out. Okay. You see what I'm saying? You see? Oh my gosh. Okay. okay? Here's the point. I was balanced. It's very stressful on your body. It's very stressful on your brain. There is no balance. So here's what you do. Do you know that a walk is a controlled fall? <laughs> do you know that? A walk is a controlled fall. I'm making progress because I'm falling, but it's a controlled fall. So what I'm doing is a sprint. These last few days and weeks have been a sprint, unbalanced. Then what happens is when I go home, then I'm going to fully engage, fully rest, but there's certain things I can't let go. Connecting with my creator, my core, and my community. So I can't let my faith drop. I can't let my physical drop. Mm -hmm. So you're right. I went to bed at midnight UK and got up at 6, which is 3. <laughs> two. 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 But I didn't let the workout go because I knew I was going to be here all day. And I needed that energy and I needed that blood flow. I also, what did I not eat at dinner? Not judging anybody. Bread. I didn't eat bread. I didn't eat a lot of sugar. But here's the point. I don't do caffeine fixes, carb crashes, sugar rushes. Because look at all the terms. <laughs> do you want to crash, rush, or fix, right? <laughs> so, so what I do, I gave you one of mine this morning. What did I have? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, so so these are, I don't know, these are just bars that are low carb, low sugar, high protein, eggs, I mean, you name it. So, you know, two bucks, whatever, but I'm just constantly being mindful of that, and uh, I don't watch CNN, constant negative news, okay? So I don't feed my brain mm -hmm. scarcity, negativity, fear, blah, 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 and people say, well, gee, you don't even know what's going on. Trust me, people will tell you. <laughs> right? So literally last week, I mean, I was so sad when I heard it, but I guess a Jewish yeah. mosque mm -hmm. or synagogue got, uh, yeah, I was I, I didn't even know about that because we were at a conference. Yeah. I didn't know what college team lost football that weekend. Some people live and die on if their college football team wins or not. Like that's their day. That's pretty sad. Don't you think? So I believe that you have to create energy and passion. All right. Who's next? Anybody's anything's fair game. Come on up. OB. OB. You got OB and OB. Yeah. Good to see you. Two OBs. Over brother. Yeah. <laughs> um, hi, my name is OB. Um, I'm writing my book, Tied to Joviality. Um, from today, I've learned the importance of subtitles. Um, but I wanted to you know, pick your brain on for one, do you think that's a good name, or do you think I should have um, some other title? What was the because title again? Joviality. Oh. How do you, what, what is that? Joviality. Joviality is a mixture of being jovial and, and yeah. being full of yeah. vitality. So, yeah. the, so the top title is Getting Fit, Being Jovial, being happy. and being Full happy. of Vitality. Okay. So here's what, you never repeat words in the title and subtitle for a couple of reasons. One is you're wasting keywords. Amazon's going to put all your title and subtitle in a, in a metadata, and it's going to be an algorithm. So if you say, well, I'm going to repeat the word, plus your public judges you. So if I say your secret name, an uncommon quest to find your secret name, people are like, oh my gosh, he's repeating words. And there's only eight words on the page. Mm. It's going to be a boring book, okay? So a book that did very well was, a, was an invention of a new word, Freakonomics. Mm. Mm. Economics, freak, Freakonomics. But they did a very cool cover. If you Google it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Mm. It's a Granny Smith gr green apple. Mm. 
you cut it in inside and it's an orange. Mm -hmm. So it's like the inside of an orange but the outside of a Granny Smith apple. Mm -hmm. Freakonomics. So the cover kind of hooked you. Mm -hmm. It was cool. People could say it. Say yours one more time. Joviality. Joviality. I don't think it's bad, but then you would need to say in the subtitle what the benefits are. Yeah. So the benefits are that P, you got to enter the conversation that's going on in someone's head. So what what is the conversation that, that the person's thinking about? Getting fit. Okay. Being jovial. But we got to change that. Mm. Full of vitality. Okay. Forward. Okay. So again, just take those other two words, and then I think you're onto something. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And pick a good cover. <laughs> cool. Anybody else? We can keep going. Just keep asking another one. Nothing's off topic. Anything you need. Anything you need, I will help. Okay. Yeah, come on up. Madeline, right? That's right, yes. Awesome. Okay. Hello, so I'm uh, Madeline Allen from Scotland. Um, I'm working on a book. As of today, the title has gone back to the drawing board, yes. so I'm not offering a title now, uh, but I'll be working on it. Yeah. My book is to help managers and employers when their staff return to work after a bereavement or a loss, okay. um, people who are working through grief. Yeah. My question, I'd like to pick up on one that you started earlier, you were yeah. talking about ways to use Facebook to engage with your tribe. Yeah. I already have built up through the research I've been doing a following, people are interested. In fact, somebody even tried to buy my book this morning and I haven't even written it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is good. Cool. But so I would really love your input on other ways of keeping that engagement going while the book's in production, building it, using social media yeah. and so on. So here's here's what. What do corporations care about? Let's be honest. Money. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Do you think bereaved employees that are not fully engaged are costing their company. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think saying, well, just go take some time off, is that going to solve the problem? No. No. So just work will distract you, so go sit in a room where you're not distracted <laughs> and no help. No. no. So what you need to do is you need to build a case, which is pretty easy, mm -hmm. and it's a one sheet, who, what, when, where, why, and how, and she has a program that she goes into companies mm. and offers mm. employees mm. that allows their, mm. sorry, employers, that allows their employees to get the help they need. Mm -hmm. And she can use the Gallup poll as illustrations and talk about how yes. many are being disengaged oh, yeah. when they don't have a loss. Yeah. Yeah. So you say, look, if your employees aren't even experiencing a bereavement, they're at best, at best 29% engaged, mm. imagine you're grieving. So then what you do is you basically supply these corporations with this proposal. You call yourself a grief coach or something like that. And then she has a four week program. You want to time it. You don't want to say I'm just on retainer for months. They won't hire you. But you have a four session process or something like this and they will absolutely hire you and it will be one of those things that's on top of mind. They might be like, you know, we don't have anyone right now. Yeah. But then you circle back every two months and send them a helpful article so that you're top of mind. And then they're like, wow, this lady's really helpful. Okay, mm -hmm. makes sense? Right. Yeah. Start Thanks charging them right now. Absolutely. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Who's got another one? Ruth, come on up. Okay. Good to see you. Thank you, Ruth. Um, my question is, yes. I'm writing the story um, about my parents. Yeah, who are yeah. My, yeah, we'll stand here. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes, parents. yeah, my parents, my father. Um, I can see the hand of God on my father that rescued him from the POW prison camp in Java. And he came out of that to go back to Japan as a missionary. My mother's a missionary in China. So I was brought up in Japan, and I'm writing the history of the family so my children can read it, my grandchildren, and generations to come. Yep. And that's where it was going to go. Yep. Now, that sort of story, should it go out there, or do, do I just keep it as within the family? Yeah. So has anybody ever read um, uh, Through Gates of Splendor, Jim Elliott? who you know was one of the missionaries killed mm -hmm. in like the 50s mm -hmm. and then Elizabeth Elliot went back to the family that killed her husband mm -hmm. and then they all mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. came to faith. Mm -hmm. I mean, that book unleashed missionaries across the world. Mm -hmm. wow. So she could have kept that private and said, well, who even knew about this, you know, this type of thing. So I believe that our stories do matter, mm -hmm. but I believe it's how we brand them. Mm -hmm. So the larger story is what Ruth is doing for her grandparents. Mm -hmm. Legacy. Do you think people want legacy? Yes. Yeah. Everybody says a few questions. Do I matter? Will they remember me? These types of things. Mm -hmm. So the small story is your family. Yeah. The larger story is how you honor the dead. Yeah. And I, would, I might even use a common phrase like that. Honoring the deceased or honoring the departed. Mm -hmm. That might be a good title, actually. I like that title. Mm -hmm. Honor, honoring the departed. And it's then very it's Japanese as well. It's very yeah, Japanese. Yeah. It's very Japanese. Yes, honor is, yes. Yeah. Then also, yeah. the other part of the story is about how I was brought up in Japan, how it affected my life, and how yeah. I rebelled, and how yeah. God rescued me. So that could be the subtitle Miracles on the Japanese soil or whatever, you know. So it's kind of got that flair of geography too. Yeah. But I think people would absolutely love that. Yeah. Folks, if you want to earn money from your book, you need a framework. Mm. A framework is a solution broken down into simple steps. Mm. If you make each chapter title be very personal, people will not see the universal tie-in. Mm -hmm. So if you say sitting on a beach in, you know, Nagasaki or something, people are like, what does that relate? I don't understand. But if you say, if you name the same chapter title, something like um, uh, Cherishing the Memory of the Departed or something like that, now people are like, oh, I can do that. So that's what you want to do. You want to make your chapter titles universal and not specific that people look at the roadmap, which is your table of contents, and they say, I can't relate. Okay? So I think it's your choice. I think that you could absolutely blow this out to reach more people. But you just got to find the angle. And if it's honoring the, the departed or being rescued from rebellion, choose that angle. Yeah. Carrie, is it worth just saying to, to you, though, sort of this works? If, you've got, if you want to do something for your family, which is really important. Yes. And then there's the other, as, as just Carrie was saying there, is the principles that apply across to everybody, you know, different different cultures. Yep. And the principles that would be helpful for anybody who's struggling with those things. Yeah. Right. And that's a choice. What you definitely want is you want that story to honor those memories. Yes. And you can then extract things from your story which you then think would mm. be something else, which could also then become a call to show, could go from there. So you're sort of moving from the inside out, if you like. Mm -hmm. okay. So, yeah, just to sum it up, I mean, the, your secret name book, again, a, s a portion of the book is my journey through self-injury. I could have I could have called it Carrie's journey through self-injury, and three people would have read it. And one was my mom. Okay. <laughs> so I tried to make it more universal. And it's changed thousands of people's life. My story's absolutely in it, but I didn't brand it that way. Mm. And I also gave what I call handles, mm. which are takeaways that people can apply. Yeah. All right? So it's a different type of writing. You can check out the book and, and see how I did it. But I think you could reach a lot of people with it. Okay? okay? Thank awesome. You. Can I yeah. just have a second question? Sure, go for it. All right. Um, hi, Cynthia again. Um, my website, www.journeytoolness.co.uk. Awesome. Um, you were going to, just to remind you, you were going to talk about, again, having our books in places like Waterstone, but yes. you were talking about the dis distribution, distribution, distribution yeah. centers, such as Nielsen and so forth. Yeah. It would be useful for you just to talk through some Let's of Listen, things. let's do that yeah. at, what time is it? Eight o'clock. Okay. Let's do that at eight fifteen, and I'll do that just for this room because right. you guys came, okay. and uh, people are watching okay. in Tennessee, and they'll be like, "I don't even care about." <laughs> so, so we'll do it that at eight fifteen, okay? But remind me at eight fifteen, okay, otherwise I'll forget. Thank you. Awesome. Come on up. Okay, my name is Grace Habershaw, the author of a book released to Raw, which is my journey going through twelve years being chronically sick being seven years totally wheelchair dependent, wow. Wow. losing the sound of my voice, being told there was no way back, and then being radically healed three years ago by the healing grace of Jesus. Mm -hmm. wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. This story is all about choices made when going through the pain. The mm -hmm. subtitle is Moving from Trapped in Pain to Trusting in Promises and Becoming Triumphant in Purpose. 
and now there is a coaching course I have to write from the book. Yeah. But where do you begin? Yes, and release to roar. Your structure. Yes. So, release to roar. I'm going to go straight to her table of contents, okay? Okay, so she's got seven steps. So she's got a life-changing experience, pain, politics, and power, confusion, healing, and deterioration, suffered, surrendered to change, faith and fragility, or frailty, and I believe in miracles, and then part seven, freedom. So here's what I try to do. I try to do, I try to make all the parts of your course parallel. So what I suggest is verb, verb, yeah, 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 you, you know where I'm going, you've heard my calls, verb, pronoun, noun, because people can remember this, so day job to dream job is part one, or step one, design your story, you see how tough it is to remember all of that? I believe in miracles, which is just a power statement, yeah. to pain, politics, and power. Yeah. These are tough to remember. They're not action. How can you do pain, politics, and power? But when you have a course, I can almost remember them. Should we test it? With my jet lag, here we go. Design your story, design your service, design your space. Mm -hmm. Right? Create your platform, create your product, create your promotion. Right? Maintain your credibility, maintain your clarity, and maintain your community. I can remember them, I haven't even looked at them, but I can rifle them off and I can give mini lessons on each one. So can your students. If your students can't remember it, they can't tell other people about it. If, how can you be sitting with someone at Starbucks and say, you gotta, you gotta check out this course. But what are the steps? I don't know. <laughs> Deterioration, uh, but you got to do it, it's good. You see what I'm saying? I'm not saying all people could remember the nine, but when it's parallel, yeah. three D's, three P's, three C's, okay. boom, boom, boom. Verb, pronoun, noun. So that's what I'm talking about. So you got to look back at your life when you were in this situation, look back at your book, your book is right, your book's not wrong, but then say, what are five, seven <coughs> steps? that everyone can do, that everyone can do. And so one of it might be confront your obstacles. You see what I'm saying? The final step, embrace your healing, whatever. But see, it's verb, pronoun, noun. And there are websites, verbs1.com, nouns1.com. You can literally go through there and click all the ones that start with a P, a D, a C, boom, boom, boom. Okay? Make sense? All right. Awesome. Use Thinkific or Teachable. It's, it's like Coke and Pepsi. You don't even need a website. You don't even need a shopping cart. You can just go to Thinkific or Teachable. And you can just record on your iPhone, put in there. In fact, I have one called Ghostwriter Academy. You can go there. That's all Thinkific. Thinkific, okay? Awesome. Next person. We'll go about... Ten more minutes, now's your chance, speed coaching. If you didn't go, come on up, stand up, second time, whatever. Anybody? Or are you guys all good? You guys have only been going like 12 hours, come on. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 About writing, can you tell us about your rituals? Because to get the importance of habits and rituals sure. in writing. Um, yeah, mm. M music is everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't write without any music on. I mean, I, I write all the time. So buy YouTube Red. If you use YouTube, commercials will hack your productivity. <laughs> if you're listening to three songs and then, hey, buy this light bulb, you're gone, okay? <laughs> so I usually use YouTube. If you type in on YouTube, epic soundtracks, you suddenly feel like you're in a movie. You feel like... Your fictitious follower, imaginary impact, is waiting for you, <laughs> hanging on a cliff, and they're going to die without you. Um, I, I think 50, five, zero minutes are good. Rest for 10. Have with you liquid. Um, I use dark chocolate. Anybody? Amen? I don't know. So you got you to have dark chocolate. I write when uh, 
in the wee hours, meaning yeah. I, it's pointless for me to try to write with three kids in the room yelling. It, it's better just to put it down and be present with the kids than it is to try to like crank out a paragraph. Mm. Um, editing is bad. People are drafters or crafters. Let me explain the difference. Yeah. Drafters are people who don't even believe in a backspace or delete key. Mm -hmm. They just mm -hmm. keep writing. Crafters are me, and that's not a good thing. Where you write a couple paragraphs, then you go back and you say, how does that sound? Ah, I'll change it a little bit. Okay, now I'll write some more. You're using your both sides of your brain, and you slow your progress down. Okay? Mm -hmm. So these are all little things. Hydrated, I tend to work out. Um, when I, you know, when I can, and then, and then write as well. Um, and then you gotta have a deadline. If you don't have a deadline, you will not finish your book. So you did yours in 21 days. Yes. So she took a course called the Elixir Project Experience where I talk about, you know, becoming unhackable, and I lay out all kinds of stuff. One of the things is urgency, and you need to create a deadline. Deadlines move people to action. Yeah. So I would encourage you to all create a deadline. Cool? Yeah. All right, next question, yeah. Awesome, we got, we got a new one. Yeah, let's get her. Fantastic. Some of you are, are scared to come up, just come up, just ask your question, if you want. What's your question, how can I help you? Um, let's see. I'm in the process of writing um, a book on <coughs> life lessons. Life lessons to motivate young people because I'm a, I'm a counselor by profession. Yep. Um, but my question here is, uh, how do I match a, my profession with a coaching business? Yeah, so my wife's a professional counselor, licensed. You do not want to create your course under your counseling banner, in my oh, opinion. Yeah. Why? Because it just raises the liabilities. Mm -hmm. I would brand it as coaching, at least okay. here in the States. In the States, you could, for $250, you could buy a coaching insurance, okay. and coaching insurance is easy. There's the restrictions are low. The moment you put it under your counseling course, now did this person listen to your course and then commit suicide? Okay, now you've got a lawsuit and this type of thing. So I would, I would call yourself a coach. If you need to even open up in the States a new LLC or something like that and make it totally different, that's, that's fine. But I would do that, all right? And then I wouldn't call it life lessons because what do kids hear every day? That's school lessons. So I would go after the benefits. Okay, what are these kids wanting? Um, acceptance, confidence. But create a cool name. A lot of so Ghostwriter Academy. Turn your passion into a profession. Mm -hmm. I usually try to pick a title, and then the subtitle tagline explains what it's about. So you can name it or invent a word, then tell people what they're going to get from it. Okay. Well, thank awesome. Much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. All right. We got time just for like two two more. Anybody. Any question? Could be about anything. Social media, book, mm -hmm. what to eat, what to drink. Yeah. So I need to create an online presence. Yeah. Um, but I have a full time job, I have a young family. Mm -hmm. Which do I pick to focus on? Is it better to do just pick one, for instance, Instagram or Facebook, those seek are my main two, yeah. rather than trying to hit all five or six mm -hmm. to, to do one well, mm -hmm. rather than spreading myself too thin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So does anyone feel overwhelmed by social media sometimes? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And then monitoring all of social media? Mm -hmm. I'd rather you be one place. Mm -hmm. And to me, Facebook groups, because Facebook groups is a community. Yeah. Facebook groups is not you just saying, hey, everybody, I'm posting content, I look at my salmon I just had, look at this, look at that. It's you saying, I'm gonna create a community. And a community is going to essentially purchase your, your stuff when you're ready to mm -hmm. sell it. Mm -hmm. So that's where I would be. Uh, some people swear by LinkedIn and Instagram and Pinterest and all these things. I just feel like 
Facebook is the most engaged community. Mm -hmm. So I would spend my time there. But I think you should also, based upon our past talking today, um, just embrace that new role and begin to, begin to stretch that courage muscle and talk to people about, um, don't get the permission, but just um, be bold, you know, be bold. Listen, if each one of us knew we had five days left to live, would we, would we be playing small? No. no. No, we'd be playing all out. I mean, that's, Sunil, that's how I live my life. Yeah. I live my life like, okay, this is the last one. Mm -hmm. let's, let's roll, you know? And then suddenly it puts everything into perspective. Cool? All right. Thank you. Awesome. Guys. Take care. Okay, next person. Yeah, come on up. Hello, it's Muriel again. Um, yes. My question is very similar to the previous one. Um, with all the things that we have to do on social media, how do you balance um, being out there, present on yeah. the platform that you feel you're, you're more comfortable with and staying productive because you still have to write, you still have other businesses to yeah. run. Mm -hmm. So how do you balance that? Yeah. I think very early on, you can hire someone for free. Mm -hmm. You want to hear how to do this? Mm -hmm. Okay, I like that. Hire someone for free. Um, <laughs> so right now, if you created a community, so let's just let's just pick on our friend here, Nic Nicola. Yay! 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 So she's got a community of 450 people, right, in her group. It's fantastic. So, or something like that. There's people in that group right now that would say, oh my gosh, she has helped me so much. I would absolutely love to get back to her. You call this a tribe community manager. By raising her profile, announcing her, see, people are already doing it, am I right? Are people in your group that are already active and engaged, you can tell who they are, they comment, they're nice, yeah. they're victors. You, I just did this this week for one of our people, except I paid her, because um, I believe in that. But. What I did is she was already saving me time. She, you know, Brenda. Mm -hmm. I announced yeah. Brenda the other day. Yes, you did. She, she was already doing the job, not in an overbearing way, but she was already serving. So I call, I asked the rest of the team, I said, hey, I think we should add her. They're like, cool, I think so too. Called her up, told her what it would mean. I would announce her, I would raise her profile, I would give her, you know, I started out small and I said a 30 day experiment. Never hire someone for long. It's an experiment. They're testing you, you're testing them. So you say, you know what, Susie, you've been really active. You've been really engaged. Mm -hmm. Here's kind of the guidelines of the group, i.e. spell it out, and you've been following that. Would you want to consider a 30-day experiment where I, I essentially elevate you to tribe community manager? Mm -hmm. What this means is that you do blank, blank, and blank. You respond to questions, you delete comments where people are pitching each other, yeah. and you do whatever. And at the end of 30 days, let's talk. And that's how you save your time. Mm -hmm. Then you come in as the thought leader, the content creator, and, and I have three tribe community managers. Erica, Tanisha, and now Brenda's focused on authors. Mm -hmm. And it's great, because I used to not be able to go out with my family, because I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. what if someone's posting something crazy right yeah. now? Mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't checked Facebook like pretty much all day, just in the back for a sec, you know, the last yeah. few days. But I trust the team. You need a team. And you might say, well, I don't have money. It doesn't matter. Not everyone is rewarded by money. Mm -hmm. People want recognition. They want significance. They want to be part of something. If you cast vision, they will love you for it. Mm -hmm. And then they can get a free ticket to the course mm -hmm. or a free ticket to your event. There's ways that you can compensate as well. Who is the membership course person? Tove in the back. She could give the tribe community manager a comp mm -hmm. membership monthly. So they basically earned their $30 for working like 10 hours. Mm -hmm. That sounds crazy, but they love it because it's part of them. They want to be part of it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right, I think the final question of the night, who wants it? Oh, yes, all right, she, she wants it. Um, hello, I'm uh, Nicola, I'm from uh, Surrey in, near London. Um, my question for you is, I have uh, an author brand, 
I've obviously got the Working Mum Association, mm -hmm. um, which is a completely different, well, mm -hmm. it's semi-same audience. Um, and then obviously I've got my mm -hmm. photography business as well. There's a lot of different brands. Mm -hmm. And you were talking earlier about saying how we should have just one brand. However, the Working Mum Association for me mm -hmm. is a much bigger proposition than, yeah. say, maybe like the the Entire authors, thing, yeah, 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 and everything else. So, what do I do? So, to me, it is the working mum, as you say, right? <laughs> to me, that is it for now. But notice that her photography business qualifies her to have credibility. If you said, hey, let's create a Working Moms Association, and people said, well, what's your job? And you're like, the Working Mom Association. You see how you lose credibility? But if you say, hey, I'm a Working Mom too, I have a photography business, suddenly that cred credentials you. In the States, it's like a pastor. Have you guys ever heard of Andy Stanley? Yes. Mm -hmm. So Andy Stanley's a big, big time pastor. He speaks, he coaches, he trains other pastors, but he also is a pastor, because otherwise he would just be this consultant professional and people would begin to say, that's nice, your advice works for you, because you don't have a church. Yeah. So it actually makes her more credibility to, to have a photography business. Yeah. Then your author is me, is you saying, now I'm going to give you written resources to help you out as working moms, or your kids because you gotta connect with your kids and teach yeah. them leadership. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does this make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it all fits. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So yeah. folks, I had an absolute blast. We were live from London. Let's, let's hear a little bit of crazy enthusiasm as we <laughs> end today. Yeah. So listen, if, uh, if you guys want a piece of kind of this action, what we do here, ignitingsoulsconference.com. Right now, tickets are half off for next year. Authoracademyelite.com. You can find out more about that. Businessacademyelite.com. But it's been great to be with you guys. I think I need to come back to London again. I had an absolute yeah. time.